Alright, so hey guys, my name's Emilia, but you can call me Io. Now, it's our finals week this week, and this is the culmination of two semesters of super, super tiring stuff. Been a tough semester for me and for a lot of us, for sure. And you know, we all have our traditional final routines. You know, we have our laptops with us, we sleep at 5 in the morning with a coffee mug. And honestly, that's pretty cool. Um, no judgments, but I noticed something wrong there. There's something about that lifestyle that's just so unhealthy. And so I decided to make a change. No, I'm not talking about changing the coffee mug. That's not going anywhere. Nor am I even talking about changing my 5 a.m. sleep schedule. Oh boy, don't push it. What I'm talking about is I'm gonna go all out on my iPad instead of my laptop. I am going to do the iPad only challenge during my finals week. I'm really nervous. But at the same time, I'm pretty confident about the iPad and what it can do for us students, what it can do for me. Because honestly, Apple and all these third-party developers have been working tirelessly on trying to make this iPad more like your MacBook, more like any other PC. Now, of course, a special shout out to Power Mac Center um, for turning my iPad into a mini laptop. Now, what they did was they gave me the smart keyboard, which works with the 10.9 inch iPad Air and the 11 inch iPad Pro. Now it connects via a smart connector at the back with a magnet. It also has magnets throughout the entire back and so it really attaches super solidly um, to the iPad. So it's not gonna be too much of a change, I hope, because the keyboard's very familiar. It's much smaller though than the MacBook keyboard, but I think that'll also work. Now another thing that can help me through this iPad-only challenge would be using the magic mouse. Now, as you know, early last year, Apple unveiled an update for the iPad OS wherein they'd allow iPad users to use a mouse or a trackpad on their iPad. And that's another thing that I think will really help me through this iPad challenge. So what am I gonna do? Like, what's gonna happen this week? I'm pretty nervous. Now it's time to set some ground rules to make this a really fun and interesting challenge. Now obviously the first rule is I can only use my iPad for work. Now that involves schoolwork, that involves org work, that involves all the other work that I do. Now I can use my phone as a second screen and I can also use an external monitor as well connected to my iPad. Now the second rule is I cannot use Sidecar. Now, as you know, Apple provides a feature where you can connect your iPad as a second screen to your Mac, and you can not only use it as a second screen, but you can also use the Apple Pencil as a cursor as well. I'm not gonna do that, so don't worry about it. Now, the third rule involves my computer science course. What I do in computer science this semester is basically data, um, coding, MySQL, Python. <laughs> And I can only do that on my laptop. But I'm kind of done with it already. Just in case I might need to make some changes and all that stuff, I'm gonna have to grab my laptop. But other than that, I cannot use my laptop for anything else. So yeah, those are the rules and good luck to me! Okay, so one hurdle I already encountered using like pages on my iPad with a magic mouse is how you, you know, select text. So on a Mac or on any PC, what you'd normally do on a pages file or a Google Docs file is when you select text, you just click on it for a little while and it already selects the text. But on the iPad, since it's a very immature implementation of the mouse, when you select text, you have to select the whole word first and then drag part of the cursor um, down to select more. The mouse cursor basically aids the existing iPad user interface instead of completely replacing it with a more um, desktop-like feel. It's gonna take some time to get used to. Personally, I'm not yet used to it because I don't really use a mouse on uh, my iPad or anything. So the mouse is also pretty sensitive. Sometimes when I just wanna drag something or select something, the mouse just goes like places. So it's not something I'm super used to. Maybe it's just my mouse, but then, then again, like on a regular Mac, my mouse works fine. And if you wanna like scroll down and stuff, you really have to do it manually, like by touching the screen, because 
you can't use the multi-touch um, feature on your mouse or the scroll ball or anything. All right, so it's currently 9.30 and I'm gonna be ending the day already. I, I slept at 6 a.m. Wow. last night cramming a, a project and, and I, I woke up at like I think 2 in the afternoon a while ago. But I, I don't know, I feel really tired parent, so I'm gonna take a break first. So today I just read a reading, did some planning for other projects as well, did some planning for my essay and just some comments about using this all day. Uh, it was really nice that I could use the Apple Pencil. I think the Apple Pencil was a really great tool. It was really useful, it, it was really convenient. I like annotating on my iPad um, for like notes and stuff. It's something I usually do in a month, but then, you know, juggling that and writing a paper at the same time with like multitasking features and stuff, you know, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. And as I said earlier, multitasking is incredibly easy, like with slide over and split view uh, on an iPad. You know, even picture in picture, you can basically watch Netflix um, in a separate window while you're doing something else on your iPad. So, something pretty cool. Though I'm gonna miss the multiple um, desktops and mission control and all that on the Mac. That's something I'm gonna have to get used to. However, you know, today was a pretty light day overall. I didn't do a lot of like super heavy work, but probably tomorrow I'm gonna do a little more um, heavy work. And let's just see what happens. So, good night, guys. All right, so good morning, everyone. It's currently 6.58 in the morning. Welcome to day two of the iPad only challenge. Um, I slept pretty early last night, as you guys know, and woke up pretty early as well. Um, I couldn't sleep anymore, so I decided to stay awake. Don't worry, I didn't use my laptop. I just used my iPad lang to like keep me sane and to just watch Netflix and stuff. So today is gonna be pretty packed. I'm gonna continue working on my social science essay, start outlining it. I'll also start my Theo Wakelet, which is a group work. I'm gonna meet my group at 3.30, I think. I'll probably take a nap in the middle of the day. So yeah, good luck to me, guys, and see you soon. All right, so I was able to take a shower and take a bit of a nap there because I only got four hours of sleep last night. But I was able to do a bit of work. I was able to add a little more to my outline for my social science essay. Um, just a couple of comments. M majority of the comments I have are like similar to what I said yesterday. But then I also noticed a couple of things. So I noticed that I was sitting on the couch more often um, using my iPad. I attribute that to the versatility and the portability of the device. I also saw myself um, using the touch screen and the Apple Pencil more. Today I haven't connected this mouse to the iPad yet. It just goes to show how different the experience is and, and it's much much easier to use the, the touch screen. You use the touch screen to like scroll or select text and all that stuff. Something I'm more used to so. Alright so I think now I'm gonna be going on a Zoom call and while I'm on the Zoom call I'm gonna be multitasking a bit. I'm gonna open a PDF. I'm gonna be doing Google Docs and I'll tell you guys how it goes. Alright, so I'm done with day two. I'm pretty sleepy. It's currently 10 in the evening. So today I was able to start writing my essay, finally. I did a bit of research also, read other articles aside from the one I was assigned to. I also planned my Theo Wakelet with my group mates. And honestly, it was pretty okay. Since I did a little more dirty work today, I connected my iPad to an external monitor and I connected my mouse as well. Just a couple of comments from today. First, uh, multitasking was pretty confusing. I had a bunch of Safari windows that were open. And when I clicked Safari from the dock, it showed me like eight different Safari windows from like um, today, yesterday, and like two months ago. So it gets kind of confusing there. And a very important Safari window I had just disappeared. I don't know why. So it was kind of a hassle for me. Same comment as yesterday. I wish that Apple takes full advantage of like their mouse and or trackpad where you'd be able to like scroll through content and select text more naturally you know um i feel like that would super improve because right now i feel like i have to be super precise with like how i like select text and stuff i end up using the touch screen for that and i guess something about connecting my ipad to a second display is the aspect ratio is kind of um off for the most part, some apps support a 16 by 9 ratio when you connect it to the monitor. So for example, Notability, 
um, can do that. But at the same time, for majority of the apps, especially for like pages and especially when I'm doing multitasking, it still shows the typical 4 by 3 aspect ratio on the external monitor. It's pretty sad because, you know, with multitasking, it would be much better to like multitask with much more room, you know, instead of seeing those black bars on the screen. But, you know, connecting a keyboard and a mouse while on a, an external monitor, honestly, I felt like I was using a MacBook. The interface really felt like a Mac or a PC. Like clicking, like web browsing, and, uh, moving the cursor around, selecting text, etc. It felt so natural, honestly. Like, it really felt like I was using a Mac or I connected the PC to a display and it's just really cool. And, you know, web browsing was super natural there, so... Uh, um, you just click windows and stuff. So yeah, as you can tell, I'm pretty tired and I'm done for the day. So tomorrow, I'm going to be doing more work. So see ya. Good night. Alright, so good morning everyone. It's currently 9.58 in the morning. I had a little more sleep last night. Um, but yeah, it's day three, and as you can tell, I am wearing a polo. This is not your typical pambahai, but I'm wearing this because later at four to five, I have two Zoom calls back to back. First would be a marketing Q and A from four to four thirty, and the second would be computer science defense um, from four thirty to five. And other than that, I'm just gonna continue writing my essay. All right, so good luck to me. <laughs> So now I'm like full on writing my essay. And one thing about academic papers is the need for very thorough citations. That includes both a reference list after writing the paper and in-text citation as well. And usually on a Mac where, where you have like multiple displays, multiple windows and stuff, I usually have a dedicated window for a citation machine. Yeah guys, I don't know how to cite sources. Um, so, yeah, I rely, so yeah, I rely on websites. And usually, I traverse through that window and the window of my source mismo and the work I do. On iPad though, the multitasking feature is kind of different. Instead of customizing where the windows are, how they're ordered and stuff, you have to open each window. So first you open the pages window, then you open the file of, of your source, then you open the citation machine, then you just flick through them each. Honestly, like it works for me. It's, it's something I have to get used to. I'm bringing it up not because it's a problem, but it's more of like something one has to get used to coming from a Mac or coming from a PC. All right, so it's currently 3.06 in the afternoon. Um, in a few minutes, I have a Zoom call with um, my classmate. Uh, we're just gonna talk about our com computer science report. And because it's a computer science related thing, um, I'm gonna have to invoke the rule about, you know, me being able to use my laptop. Because I, I, I'm not familiar with like platforms uh, for like coding and stuff on my iPad. So I'm gonna be doing that call on my laptop. But right after that, I'm gonna put it back in my cabinet. Then I'm gonna go on a call at 4 p.m. with my marketing professor and a panel. We're gonna defend our presentation. Then at 4.30, I'm gonna go on a call with my computer science professor. But I won't need my laptop for that. <laughs> All right, so I just finished two defenses, like back to back. And all of that happened in one hour. Not an easy hour. But my marketing um, presentation was pretty okay. Wow. Uh, the other, the computer science one, I was kind of like tired already. So I didn't really know to answer oh. questions. So yeah, right now I'm just going to finish my social science paper. Don't worry guys, I'm back on my iPad. So I mentioned earlier that the user interface for multitasking is very different with the Mac and the iPad. Um, I guess an advantage with the Mac is when you like use another app, you can totally separate like the workspace on mission control and stuff. But on the iPad, you, know, you have to manually open all the apps so that your workflow is preserved. Again, it's something I have to get used to. It's not necessarily a flaw. I don't want to judge the iPad relative to a Mac. I want to judge it as its own platform. All I'm going to say is, it's something to get used to. Though multitasking on the iPad is so pretty good so far. So I'm currently at 
992 words out of 1,500 words. This is actually the first time I'm, you know, full on working on like a, a super heavy academic paper, like a 1,500 word academic paper on my iPad. So this is actually pretty cool. It's really nice to know that I have another device besides my laptop that is like totally capable of you know, writing such a lengthy document. Honestly, I don't know how to not go beyond um, 1,500 words because right now I have like 508 words left. Um, obviously, that doesn't include citations, but you know, so I'm gonna subtract that. Pa. But then again, you know, I still have like a couple more paragraphs to write. Yeah, wish me luck, guys. So yeah, guys, I'm pretty tired. So good night. <laughs> Alright, so good morning everyone. It is day 4 of the iPad Only Challenge. It is currently 9.27 in the morning. I kind of woke up early today because, I don't know, my body clock's pretty weird. I slept at 12 last night, then I woke up at around 6 a.m. I don't know what's happening to me, guys. I usually wake up at noon. <laughs> so I plan to do the paper right now. So like, until around 11, 12. Then in the afternoon, I'll just finish my video. So yeah, last stretch guys. Very uh, guarded. So yeah, I just want to make a clarification guys. I made a lot of comments about how you can't scroll on a mouse when connected to your iPad. And I described it as very distinct from the experience you get on a laptop or a MacBook. But apparently, if you get the Magic Keyboard, which does have a trackpad built in, you'd be able to scroll through your content using a trackpad. I just don't happen to have that so yeah my situations have an isolated case don't generalize it with the entire ipad experience but yeah just to clarify this is just my experience with an ipad only no macbook so if you want to replace your laptop with an ipad i highly recommend you also look at other videos that feature the magic keyboard all right guys so my camera just died my phone's at one percent i'm done with my social science paper finally after how many days of real you know, reading researching and you know i finally wrote it so now i'm just gonna start my theo finally uh, eat some dinner first and then you know head to bed nagad um i'll just see you guys tomorrow for day five all right so good morning everyone it is day five it is currently 11 26 in the morning yeah i took a little longer this morning but right now i'm going to be starting my theo group work this is gonna be my last assessment for the year and then after this i will be done with the ipad only challenge and i'm gonna have to edit this video and so just in case you guys are bored i'll show you guys a funny video Hey guys, just came back from dance class. <gasps> Michael, what are you doing in my room? <laughs> Why'd you lock the door? <laughs> oh, so that's for sticking with me for this entire video. So thanks guys. Alright, so I'm probably gonna make a video about this soon also, but since you guys are already here, like I just wanna show you the different apps I use on my iPad. And I guess this would also like probably help you in deciding how you'd use your iPad or if you're thinking about an iPad just to reassure you that you actually can do a lot of like really productive things here. Alright, so this is my home screen. Um, as you know, I didn't really change it as much. This is pretty much like the default arrangement. But this is a pretty cool app. Basically, Measure um, allows you to use the camera to measure stuff in the real world. So it uses augmented reality to do so. So some apps that I want to show you also. So of course, Messages. Sorry for the notifs. I use files for iCloud. I get files from my desktop. This is actually like connected to my desktop. It has all of like the things I download on my module. I have Mail. Sorry again for the notifs. Safari. I use Calendar because it's very visual, very interesting interactive. I use notes like for on-the-go notes. There's actually a pretty cool feature here. When you're still on the lock screen on your iPad and you use Apple Pencil to touch the screen, um, it'll automatically bring you to a note where you can just write on the go. 
I also use Notion to organize like some parts of my life. I haven't really integrated Notion into my life, but then this is my content calendar. I keep it here. I manage my YouTube channel here. Um, photo, Spotify, Netflix, YouTube. I keep those on the dock because I use them a lot. For the next page, I have my socials here. Um, I don't have Facebook. I deleted it. I have Instagram, Twitter, uh, all of these apps. Um, I don't really use them as much except for these two and TikTok sometimes. When I just go on my my for you page by accident and I end up in the app for like two hours straight not something I'm proud of so for my finance app so Gcash and Como they only work on one device so this is my bank app obviously works here eToro I use that for stocks and crypto I don't really edit videos here as much so I have my news apps of course shopping games <laughs> lol uh, I don't really play here as much so I have a guitar tuner here launch pad and all that I haven't used them in a while um, I use VLC to open video files for from my laptop to my iPad. So if I want to watch a movie, I can just connect a hard drive onto my iPad and open the file on VLC. So these are some of the other apps I just downloaded recently. So some other apps here would be Altstore and INDS. So if you want to play like Pokemon, Diamond and Pearl, or like some other nostalgic DS game on your iPad, you can do so. So I've made a whole video on it. You can check it out here. And so this page is dedicated to schoolwork, professional work. So I have my Canvas here, Zoom, Moodle. So Notability is actually my preferred option because it's very organized. It has a simple user interface and my notes are all there and it's super easy to organize and that's something I'm really into. I work, Google stuff, Microsoft Office. And then this is more of like my creative career side. So of course LinkedIn is here, lol. So I have some tools I use for like my YouTube channel for like other projects. So this is for managing Facebook pages. Um, this is for analytics on my studio and my videos. This is a teleprompter, basically. Affinity Photo is my preferred app for photo editing and stuff. Pretty cool, actually. So I make a lot of my thumbnails here. You know, it's very easy to use and it's very fun to use because you're using the Apple Pencil, basically. Photoshop, of course. I have Photoshop here. Lightroom, Pixelmator. I've been using Pixelmator since I was young. So yeah, I'm gonna keep that there. Canva, of course. And then my note for flowchart and then um, iFont. It basically allows me to download any font on the internet and open it here and basically I can use any font I want. So these are all fonts I downloaded from the internet lang. Alright, so I just finished my finals and I did that mostly on my iPad. I still had to use my Mac for some computer science project. And just a confession guys, our final FIO assessment was a wake lab. It's basically a website or a platform where you can just, you know, put a bunch of different stuff on it. Uh, multimedia files, pictures, essays, and stuff. It's, it's also kind of like a Google Doc or a Notion file. I was trying to use it on my iPad, but unfortunately, you know, it was very slow. I, I couldn't muster the courage to accomplish the task like super efficiently on my iPad. So I had to use my Mac eventually. But don't worry, guys. I did that just today on day five. That means the whole four days I had, except for that one hour where I was doing something for my computer science project, I basically used my iPad. IPad lang. Um, I wrote a whole paper on it, a final subject paper. I did a lot of reading and research on it. I finished my marketing presentation, question and answer there. You know, multitasking on iPad is really good. Overall, it's getting there in terms of replacing your laptop, though I wouldn't necessarily call the iPad a direct replacement to your laptop. And why is that? Um, the iPad was built differently. It was built to do different things in a different way. It has a touch screen, the Mac doesn't. It has the Apple Pencil, the Mac doesn't have that. But the Mac has a trackpad that is much larger and much more cohesive and it has a cursor that is more precise and stuff. The multitasking is different and so it's very strict in terms of you know how many apps you can use. So currently you can use two apps side by side plus one um, on slide over and then you have a bunch of different workspaces to work with versus on a Mac. Uh, it's more customizable. It's more um, you can open multiple apps at once. You can see multiple apps at once because you have a desktop. But yeah, I wouldn't compare a Mac and an iPad because it's like comparing apples and oranges you know you just they're just not built the same way and they have different functionalities they have different things now can you replace your MacBook with your iPad I would say for many people yes 
um, if you are very open to downloading all these apps and working on them, getting the most optimized experience through that process, um, I think that would be good. Um, I also highly recommend that you guys get the Magic Keyboard for iPad, which also includes trackpad, just in case you're using it as a direct replacement to your MacBook. In my use case, I have a MacBook, I have an iPad, and I use my MacBook a lot for like heavy, heavy workload. So I do a lot of video editing on my MacBook, which you can't do on the iPad yet, unless you get LumaFusion, but then again, it's still not enough to operate the YouTube channel. But I use my iPad for a bunch of other creative tasks, like photo editing, uh, making posters, making artwork, making the thumbnails. I do that all here on my iPad, as I showed you guys earlier. So in conclusion, I survived with my iPad only for the most part. If I were to give a score, I would give it a 75 over 100. So why? I was able to survive on my iPad for four whole days. I did a whole paper on it, so I think that deserves a lot of kudos. Of course, there's the wakelet issue, and I just cannot not use my MacBook for like video editing and stuff. However, if creative photo editing on an iPad is possible, I think that in the future, in the late future, video editing would be as well. Now I'd like to give a special shout out as well to Power Mac Center for making this video possible. Um, Power Mac Center is the leading premium reseller in the Philippines and they have a team dedicated to the education market here in the Philippines. So if you're a student and you want to buy Apple products or, or if you want to get special support, they have a Viber chatbot and I'll be linking it down in the description below. And basically there you can avail of special student discounts wow. um, for Apple products and Power Mac accessories. And you'd also be able to ask them questions on the fly about your concerns regarding your Apple products. And if you happen to order a product through that channel, you'd be able to get it delivered onto your doorstep at your convenience in a matter of days. So that's something very convenient. I personally got my MacBook and iPad through Power Mac Center's education team. So brilliant job, super efficient, great stuff. Also, on Tuesday, Apple's gonna have WWDC 2021. There, they're gonna be introducing a bunch of software products like the new iOS 15, macOS 12, um, watchOS, you know, and they're probably going to be introducing new Macs as well. So if you want me to make a video summarizing it so you don't have to watch the full two-hour keynote, like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and click the bell down in the description to get notified every time I post something. So yeah, this was a really tiring week. Thank you though for watching this whole video. Thank you for reaching the end. I'm really tired, so I'm gonna sleep now. Good night, guys.